Newcastle uh, incredibly one foot in the Carabao Cup final yeah. having seen off Southampton last night I was saying to Ali are they onto something spectacularly special this season I mean can you imagine a Carabao Cup final win and maybe top four I think they're doing tremendously well they've, they've, they've certainly come forward more quickly than I anticipated and many others um, they're doing it from a very very strong foundation of defensive solidity brilliant what he's done in that respect um, but they're still although they're really difficult to beat and don't concede many goals they still pose a threat going the other way it's the hardest balance to have in football yeah. you know they're enjoyable to watch Yeah, got great fitness great legs in the team um, a lot of those players are playing with a hunger that you know you need to move forward and be successful competing for their places I think some of them want to be on the journey and they know that the club's going to obviously spend you know there's going to be players coming in and those ones there they're, 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 it looks like they're trying to stay on board with it you know sure and 16 clean sheets I mean is oh. Nick Pope the best now in England um, he's got he's got to be up there yeah I mean he's he's a phenomenal goalkeeper I love his I love the fact he comes off his line I love the fact he catches balls instead of punching them when there's nobody around him I hate seeing that um, his shot stopping's always been superb. There'll always be a question mark over his footwork when you're comparing him to Ramsdale and Pickford because they're particularly good. And that's probably why he won't oust Pickford from the England team. But in terms of his all-round game, yeah, he's, he's up there for sure. I just wonder, Simon, now, it, you and I had our charity bet about Indeed. top six. I yeah. think we, we, we're both agreed that is now more than likely uh, to happen that Newcastle will finish top six, but top four well, and a cup win. They're, they're riding a wave of uh, euphoria, momentum and a slightly disparate Premier League where you've got three sides that might at the beginning of the season, have been considered to be shoe-ins for in and around those top six, which are obviously Tottenham, uh, Liverpool and Chelsea. So, you know, you no one anticipated that Liverpool and Chelsea would be asleep at the wheel, as they have been for most of the season. But that notwithstanding, what Danny's view on Newcastle is exactly mine, which is that they are a very interesting side to watch. They're a very disciplined side. They've mm. built themselves around some strong foundations, but they're also a very energetic, entertaining side. They are, they're, they're moving into the territory. There was a point of time a couple of years ago where everyone really liked watching Leeds because they were just like a basketball match and they were so entertaining. <laughs> Newcastle were taking... They're not scoring as many goals as people think they possibly are in their mind's eye, but they are a very interesting and entertaining side. And it's interesting how they've moved away from the necessity to rely on Alain St. Maximum. Mm. And now he's a bit part player mm. in the equation. Yeah. So you've got to give a lot of admiration. I wouldn't be surprised to, if, it, if, they, if they double down on Dean Ashton's argument of winning a pot, which may well be the EFL Cup. And that will be absolutely phenomenal for Newcastle. And I do understand that possibly my sentiment of top four superseding uh, winning a cup is probably wrong in the eyes of the Geordies because whilst I understand the economic largesse of being in the Champions League, they'll take a trophy, I suspect, over being in the top four. But they might get both. I, I still think they'll drop out of the top four. But they're doing remarkably well. They're ahead of, they're ahead of a plan which will now need to be torn up because that plan has gone in the bin now because the expectation level of people will, whether yeah. they like it or not, start to move in a different direction. Well, while you boys were fighting your way back into the building, we invited Newcastle fans to come on and tell us what they're thinking right now. Uh, there are nothing, if not ecstatic bunch, I'm quite sure. Neil is a big Newcastle fan. Neil, uh, so glad you've got through to us, mate. So many callers, but let's take yours. Neil, are you onto something special, mate? Jim, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're, on to some, we're, we're on to something extremely special, Jim, in... in it's it's not something that's happening too quick. It's it's solely down to obviously the takeover has had a massive impact. But Newcastle haven't spent massively. They've spent extremely wisely, and they brought in players that could put this, put this club where it is now. The club has built a relationship with the fans. The fans have bought into it, and that is what is the the the, the wave that Simon is talking about. That is how that wave has occurred, and it just gets bigger and bigger. But Believe you me, as a Newcastle fan, we will never have great expectations. And I can guarantee you now, every single Newcastle United fan would be li rather lifting that Carabao Cup in a few weeks' time than finishing in the top mm. four. And I guarantee you that now without any any doubt whatsoever. <laughs> I'll tell you one, I'll tell you, I'll tell, can I just say that one of the biggest things, and I'm sure you'll agree with me as well, is Eddie Howe, because although the signings have been good, they're made to look better when they're put into a system and coached in a way that allows them to look good. I know they're decent signings, but he is the one that's put them together. He's put this jigsaw puzzle together. 
and made it. I mean, the, the two wide boys, if you look at Almiron and Joel Linton, who generally have started right and left when he's got his best 11, those two, their work ethic going the other way is part of the reason they're so good defensively. Yes, yeah. they've got good fullbacks, but yeah. the whole, they don't carry anyone. Now, you, you know, you, you've got a desire maybe in the future to get bigger names, and the balance is going to be getting big names who have got better quality to act, but still give you that work ethic. That's going to be the balance. It's a lovely problem, isn't it, Neil? Isn't it? It's a wonderful it's problem a, to have. Where, wonderful where would some big problem, names fit in? And it's a wonderful problem, Jim. And Danny said the nail on the head. Eddie Howe is the magician behind the Newcastle Revolution. Forget Tigo, that's that sort of thing. Obviously, that's helped and that sort of thing. But bringing in Eddie Howe was a masterstroke. And, and Unai Emery turning down Newcastle was the best thing that happened in Newcastle. And, and his, his wave will, will crash the shore with, with Villa in, in due course. But that's a different matter. But what I would say is Eddie Howe got sacked from Bournemouth. He didn't have the best defensive record in the world. What that man done was he went away. He didn't rush into any little job that he could have taken, undoubtedly. He went away travelled the world under top-class managers and looked and studied these managers and how they worked, brought that all back. And don't underestimate Jason Tindall's role in this because he's, he's Jason's... Uh, yeah, true. Uh, and uh, Graham Jones. Really, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Graham Jones stayed with Newcastle. He was sure. the, the, the link that stayed there. And so it's just absolutely brilliant at the minute. But just to give Everton fans that glimmer of hope, we fought for over 10 years to get our club back. And we, we fought long and hard and never, ever gave up the battle. We stuck well with the manager stably. We took with the takeover. We stayed with it. And all I would say to Everton fans is one day, one day, big clubs like Everton, Newcastle, will remain in the Premier League. They'll retain the proper fan base that they have. And they will get their clubs back. And this is what happens when you get your club back. And Superb. James, Neil, you listen are up. a brilliant advocate for Newcastle. You're welcome at St. James's Park every week. Just keep signing in London. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Neil. Neil, uh, speaking on behalf of many Newcastle fans around the country, I'm quite sure this morning. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.